Hi. So this is this is part eleven of our exploration of Lagrange's theorem. And yeah, so this is part eleven of our exploration exploration of Lagrange's theorem. This is part 11. All right. So, I mean, we've already talked about what Lagrange's theorem is, right? The idea is look, suppose G is finite. Let's take H to be a subgroup of G. It follows that the order of H actually divides the order of G, right? This, this is what we're able to show. So, so far we've been thinking about the question well, what's Lagrange's theorem good for? We came up with a couple of consequences and now we want to think of one more. <laughs> yeah, one more, sure. So suppose suppose the order of G actually equals to P to some alpha. Right? Here here P is prime and alpha is well, let's say greater than or equal to 1, right? All right. So, our question is, I mean, first, let's, let, let's think about what does this tell us about our group G? What does it tell us about its subgroups? And the best way to truly understand what's going on is to, why don't we look at an actual example right so let's construct a group of order p to the alpha for instance I mean we could set let's say we could set p equals to 2 right if we set p equals to 2 and alpha equals to 2 say right then we could come up with a group of order p to the alpha that's a question. Can we come up with a group of order p to the alpha, right? Of order two squared. Can you think of a group whose order is two squared? Right. Well, there are obviously many out there. Let's focus on. Uh, let's see. How about z mod two z cross z mod two z, right? So, what is this group exactly? Let's see. Some of the elements it has are, well, it's going to have the element 0 taken from the first group of Z mod 2Z and 0 taken from the next group of Z mod 2Z. The next element is going to be 0 from, taken from Z mod 2Z and 1 taken from the other group. And then we'd have, well, 1 in the first group, 0 in the second, 1 in the first, and then 1 in the second. All right. What's the order of Z mod? Let's call this G. Let's call Z mod 2 ZG. What's the order of G? Well, how many elements are in G? Do we have four elements in G? Is the order of G equal to 4? All right. If, if the order of G equals to 4, well, isn't 4 equal to 2 squared? All right. So are we saying that our group G is actually of the form P to the alpha, where P is some prime and alpha is some natural number? Okay. Now, now, now let's think about let, let, let's think about this group Z mod uh, uh, Z mod two Z equals Z mod two Z, otherwise known as G here. So, firstly, question. Order of G is 2 to the 2 squared. Okay. Order of G is 2 squared. But, I mean, we may want to know, well, does the group G have a subgroup of order 2, of order P in this case? Does it have a subgroup of order 2? 
Well, what do you think? Well, maybe a question is, well, what are the operations on this group, z mod z mod 2z cross z mod 2z? Here we're thinking of it in terms of addition, and it's exactly what, what, it, what we think it is. So, for instance, what do you think 1, 1, the element 1, 1, plus the element 0, 1 is going to be in our new group? Here we'll get one from the first, we'll add slot by slot. So in the first entry, we'll have one plus zero. One plus zero is one mod two, so that's just one. The second slot will be one plus one. One plus one is two, but mod two, two is zero. That's kind of how our addition is working here. Right. And zero one, well, what will zero one plus zero one be? What zero plus zero? Is, it, is one plus zero zero? And is zero congruent to zero mod two? Right. What about one plus one? That's two. What's two mod two? Is that zero? So we think that zero one plus zero one will also equal to zero zero. Right. So given this operation of addition, well, we can ask the question: Is there a subgroup of G that has order two? What do you think of this question? How would we find a subgroup of order 2? What, what strategies do we have? Okay. Suppose we are able to find an element of order 2 in the group z mod 2z cross z mod 2z. Would that be enough in order for us to prove that, a, that g has a subgroup of order 2? Uh, let, let's try and work it out. Uh, let's see. Do we have an element of order 2 in here? What about... Well, what's the order of 0, 0? Let's take 0, 0 and ask, well, what's the order of 0, 0? Okay. How many... I mean, first of all, what's the identity? Eh? What, what's the identity? What do you think the identity is? What's supposed to be true about the identity? Is it that when you add an element to the identity, so even before we go there, is it that when you add an element to the identity, we get the, we get the element back? That is, if g is an element of a group, then g times 1 should equal to g. Okay. If, if that's true, then what's the identity over here? What element is there such that when we add anything to it, we get that element back? Are we saying that our identity is 0, 0, 0? For instance, what's 0, 0 plus, let's say, some other element of the group, like 1, 0? Does that give us 1, 0? Is it true for any, that for any element in our group here, if we add it to 0, 0, we get that element back? All right. So, if, if 0, 0 is really our identity element, all right, if 0, 0 is our identity element, Right, then, I mean, what, what's the order of 0, 0 going to be? Right. What are we going to need to, how many times are we going to need to add 0 to itself, in order, 0, 0 to itself, in order to get 0, 0? Right. Is the answer 1? Just add it to itself once, and the question is actually, the order would be asking, well, what is the smallest number of times we need to add 0, 0 to itself, in order to get 0, 0? Well, the answer seems to be we don't need to add 0, 0 to anything at all. Just 0, 0 on its own is enough uh, to give us 1. Okay, G to give us the identity. In this case, the identity is 0, 0. Okay. All right. But let's pick some other elements of our group. How about, how about 1, 0? Okay. What's, what's the order of 1, 0? Well, how many times do we need to add 1, 0 to itself in order to get 0, 0? Well, let's, let's think about 1, 0 plus 1, 0. What's 1, 0 plus 1, 0? Okay. 1 plus 1, that gives us 2. What's 2 mod, mod 2? Is it 0? How about 0 plus 0? That's 0. What's 0 mod, zero, mod 2? 
is that zero as well okay so if adding one zero to one zero gives us zero zero are we saying that or here the order was supposed to be one actually are we saying that the order of one zero is actually equal to two okay if the order of one zero equals to two right is this enough for us to find because remember what we're trying to look for is we're trying to find a subgroup of the group g that has order of the prime in this case order two okay so let's let, let let's let's think about that well okay we know that one zero has order two right let's now consider the following set the set one zero and the set one zero squared right. and here we're saying let's call this h we're saying that one zero squared is just equal to one zero plus one zero okay so is this is this a group is h equals to one zero comma one zero squared a group right. that's the question well first of all do we have the identity element in here right. what's one zero squared okay did we find that one zero plus one zero was zero zero okay so is it possible for us to rewrite given that one zero squared if we're saying that one zero squared is zero then is it okay to say that the set the set h can actually be written as one zero and then just zero zero replacing one zero squared by, by by zero zero okay if that's true the question is is h a group what would we need to do to check if h is a group well would we need to check closure is this h closed if we added any two elements in h do we get an element in h back for example what's zero zero plus zero zero does that still give us zero zero what about one zero plus one zero what does that give us did we see that gives us zero zero again what about one zero plus zero zero does that still give us one zero okay so are we saying that h is closed all right what about is there an identity element could you think of which one is the identity element in this group all right is there a is it associative right. would probably be the other thing we need to check well if elements of h are taken from the group g then doesn't associativity of h follow from associativity of g because elements of h are also in g and g is associative all right how about uh, what's the other thing we need to check closure identity inverses inverses okay does every element have an inverse here what's the inverse of zero zero is the inverse of zero 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 what zero zero plus zero zero okay does that give us zero zero so can we say that zero zero is its own inverse what about one zero what do we need to add to one zero that in order to get zero zero well how about one zero what's one zero plus one zero is that zero zero okay so is one zero its own inverse as well all right so if h is closed and h has the identity element and h is associative and h has an inverse can we conclude that h is a group all right so if h is a group if h is a group and h is a subset of the group g can we conclude that h is actually a subgroup of g okay what's the order of h two all right so and the order of g was what was it two squared okay so have we found a subgroup of g of order two all right and what strategy did we use well all we seem to have done is we picked some element we found an element of order two namely one zero and we used that element one zero in order to create we created a cyclic group right generated by the element one zero we had one zero and one zero squared we created a cyclic group and that turned out to be a subgroup of the group g with the given order that is to find a subgroup of order two 
it seemed to be enough to just find a an element of order 2 and using that we could get a subgroup of the group G that has order 2 that seemed to be what we did here so well order of h equals to 2 order of g equals to 2 squared all right so i mean this is all well and good it seemed like kind of maybe perhaps a simple example well let's now ask a general question what i mean looking at this this idea that you have a group of order 2 squared and you have a subgroup of order 2 what does that want you to want to ask is is there a way to generalize this statement here how can we generalize this observation that we have a group of order of whose order is 2 squared it has it must it it has we had we, we have a group of order 2 squared and we found that we had a subgroup of order 2 how could we generalize this concept can we say the following can we say that can we say that if order of a group equals to p to the alpha where p is prime and alpha here okay p is prime and alpha is uh, greater than 1 so p prime alpha greater than or equal to 1 is a natural number can we say that if, if this is true, if order of G is P alpha, then does this imply that there exists some subgroup H of G such that the order of H equals to P? Can we say this? If the order of a group is P to the alpha, can we say that it has a subgroup whose order is P? Is that a guarantee? Right? That, that's what we're thinking about. All right. So... I mean, does it make sense that that's, is that a generalization of what we did before? Here we had a group of order 2 to the 2 squared. P was 2, the power alpha was 2, and we said that, okay, we found a subgroup of order P, of order 2. So this kind of led us to the natural question, well, what if we have a group of order P to the alpha, where P is prime and alpha is greater than or equal to 1? Can we conclude that there is a subgroup of H that has order P? Right. What's the question? What do you think? Is this is this true? Or is it not true? So, how would we go about tackling a question like this? Okay, if order of G equals P to the alpha, then there exists a subgroup of order P. Alright. How do we prove this? For instance, how would we show that there exists a subgroup of order of order H whose order equals to p how would we show that well or the the more general question is how do we show that a given group has a subgroup of a given order right. how would we show something like that okay would finding an element of order p in g be enough to show that g has a subgroup of order p that's the question. So suppose suppose we found suppose we found little g element of big G such that such that the order of G little g the order of the element equals to p to equals to p. Would that be enough for us to conclude that the group is the group G has a subgroup of order p? How, how do we be able to conclude such a statement? If, if let's say we figured out that the order of G, that there's some element in the group that has order P, why would that be enough for us to know that the group also has a subgroup of order P? Could cyclic groups help us here? Suppose we define the H, suppose we define the H to be G to the 0, G to the 1, G to the 2, all the way, this is the little g picked up from g, all the way up till g to the p minus 1. Well, how many elements do we have in h? Okay. Do we have p elements in h? Okay, is the order of h p? Okay, if the order of h is p, and we're able to find h equals to this, right, this cyclic group, this cyclic, I mean, right, this is a cyclic group, right, that's something we saw in the previous video. So, 
isn't H also a subgroup of G? All right. If this H happens to be a subgroup of G and order of H equals to P, isn't that enough for us to see that H must have a subgroup of order P? Right. Provided, of course, we can find some element of the group that has order P. So, I don't know, does it make sense to you that all to prove that one strategy, to prove that the order of G is, that G has a subgroup of order P, does it make sense to say that all we need to do is to find some G in G such that order of G equals to P? Right. So, can we then rewrite our, 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 our question as follows? Right. So saying, instead of asking if order of G equals to P to the alpha, does that, instead of asking, does that imply that there exists a subgroup H of order P? Could we say instead, is it the same as saying, if order of G equals to P to the alpha, does that imply that there exists an element little g of G such that order of G equals to P? If we can show that such an element exists, is that enough for us to show that there exists a subgroup of order of order P? Right. And that's been part of our investigation here. So are you, are you convinced by this, that actually finding an element of order P automatically guarantees us a subgroup of order P of the group G? All right. So let's see. If, if you buy into that, let's now ask the question, well, if we know that a group has order P to the alpha, why does that guarantee us that there exists an element in the group whose order is actually P? Right. Well, why is that true? Okay. So, is the following statement accurate? Either either G, either P to the alpha has an element of order P to the alpha, or P to the alpha has no element of order P to the alpha, right? So that is, either there exists a G in G such that order of G equals to P to the alpha, the order of the group, or there doesn't. Either, or there doesn't exist such G in G, such that order of G equals to P to the alpha. All right. So these are the two possibilities, aren't there? Either there's an element of P to the alpha, or there isn't an element of P to the alpha, of order P to the alpha. All right. So let's see. Let's see if we can tackle both both cases. Suppose we're able to show that. Alright, so yeah, how are we going to uh, solve this problem is the question. In particular, what led us to ask to, to divide the problem into cases of we have an element of order P to the alpha and we have no element of order P to the alpha, right? Well, what led to that intuition? Right, so if we have an element of order P to the alpha, right, then what that means is the group is cyclic and then the cyclic group is some, okay, okay, okay. So let, let's see if we can do this uh, systematically. So, I mean, we have two cases, right? Either the group G is such that its order equals to P to the alpha, Either the group G has an element whose order is P to the alpha, or it doesn't, okay? Suppose it does. Why, why do we care so much that... What would be so important about knowing that there exists some element G in G such that... 
such that order of g equals to p to the alpha. That is, why is it important for us to have an element of order p to the alpha? Right? That, that's a question for you. Why do you think that's important to us? How can we use that to conclude that the order of g, the order of, that the group must also have an element of order p? Right? So, so, so let's work at that. All right, so let, let's see why this statement has to be. Uh, let, 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 let's see if we can derive why the why there must be an element of order p as well. But so, but first of all, let's think about it. What does it mean? What does it mean for the group G to have an element of order p to the alpha? Right. If order if there exists some element G of order p to the alpha, right. what is true about G? Right. Can we write G as follows? Can we write G as, well, oh, sorry, uh, got the hard eraser. All right, so can we write G as follows? G as little g to the zero. Let's just pick any element. Let's pick, the, let's find whatever the element is whose order is p to the alpha, right? So. Can we, write, can we write the group G as G to the 0, G to the 1, G to the 2, G to the 3, all the way up till G to the, G to the P minus 1. Oh, sorry, <laughs> G to the p to the group the order of the group right p to the alpha minus one let's see do you agree that the group g can be written in this form right. so i mean what would we need to check in order to know that this is true well first question what was the order of g again okay was the order of g p to the alpha What about what about this set that we've come up here? For the moment, let's call the set H. Okay, we're not sure yet if it's a group or not. Let's call it H. Let's say that H. Okay, let's let's erase this. This is looking sloppy. So all right. So let's set H equals to that. The set G to the zero, G to the one, up to G to the P L to the alpha minus one so question is what's the order of g is order of g p to the alpha all right well now first question is h a subset of g can we at least establish that is h a subset of g right given that well every element of h is of the form g to the i for some i natural number and we're saying that g g and 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 little g and little g is an element of big g okay so if g is closed is it a guarantee that g to the i just multiplying g by itself a couple of times is still going to give us an element of g all right so if this is true if if G being closed implies that every element of H, every G to the I is in G, every little G to the I is in G, doesn't that mean that H is a sub subset of G? Right. Okay. What if, if H is a subset of G, all right? Well, what, what, else, what, else, what else can we ask? Well, I mean, we're trying to determine whether H equals to G or not, right? Well... If we know that H is a subgroup of G, what else do we need to show in order to show that H actually equals to the group G, All right? So, if nothing else, at least we'll have found a different way to write the group G, which is progress, because before we had no idea what the group looked like at all, other than that its order was P to the alpha. So, we're, we're trying to learn about our group G here. Maybe that will help us to see that there must be an element of order P. Okay, so, what else, if we know that H is a subset of G, what else do we need to show in order to conclude that H equals to G? 
Suppose we were able to show that the order of h equals to what do you think is going to equal to? Suppose we show that the order of h equals to the order of g, and we already know that h is a subset of g. Would that be enough to show that h equals to g? So question, is the order of h equals to the order of g? What would we need to check in that case? How many elements do we have in h? Well, 0, 1, 2, up to, up to p to the alpha minus 1. So can we say that order of h equals to p to the alpha? Can we say that? Well, what if, what if some elements of h are the same? That is, what if... What if we went into H and found that, let's say, maybe G to the 2 equals to G to the 3, okay? Is this, uh, is this possible, where the powers are different? That is, in general, let's say G to the M equals to G to the K for some elements of H. Is that possible if M does not equal to K? Now, remember that we proved that... What, what, what is this set? What type of set is this? Uh, isn't this a cyclic kind of set, right? at least a cyclic set? Is it, doesn't it look like a cyclic group that we worked on before? So, let's see. Could you convince yourself, right? Th those are too many hints already. <laughs> Could you convince yourself that if M does not equal to K for the set H, then G to the M does not equal to G to the K? For any M and K not equal, G to the M does not equal to G to the K. And what would that mean? Would that mean that none of the elements we've written here are the same? If none of the elements we've written here are the same, what's the order of H? Can we conclude that the order of H equals to P to the alpha? Okay. If H is a subgroup of G and order of H and order of H equals to P to the alpha, but order of G also equals to P to the alpha, aren't we saying that order of H equals to order of G? If order of h equals to order of g, and h is a subset of g, does that mean that h equals to g? Alright, so if h equals to g, then, can we write g as the set? So is, can we now say then the following? Can we say that g is actually equal to g to the 0, g to the 1, g to the 2, all the way up till g to the p to the alpha minus 1? So, at the very least, we've learned something about our group, provided we have an, we're saying that provided there exists some element G, whose order is P to the alpha, at least we know what the group looks like. Okay, we know what the group looks like, sure, but why is this useful information in helping us determine that, the, that this group G must have a subset, sorry, must have a subgroup of order P? That's the question. How is this useful for us? Sure, G is cyclic. Why does saying that G is a cyclic group tell us that there must be an element of order P? Because if we can show there's an element of order P, we can show there's a subgroup of order P. All right? So, question. If we look at this cyclic group G, are we guaranteed of an element whose order has to be P? Well, let's see, is the element, what about the element g to the p? Right. Is the element g to the p an element of g? What would you need to do to check if, element, if the element g to the p is an element of g? Well, wouldn't, we, wouldn't all that we need to check be that p, to check is that p is less than p to the alpha minus 1. Right? If p is less than p to the alpha minus 1, and the elements of g are starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, incrementing up to p to the alpha minus 1, if you can find that p is less than p to the alpha minus 1, would that be enough for us to show that g to the p is actually an element of G. 
So if that's true, well, let's check. Is p less than p to the alpha minus 1? What would we need to prove in order to show that p is less than p to the alpha minus 1? For instance, suppose we showed that p minus p to the alpha minus 1, suppose we showed that that's less than 0. Would that be enough to tell us that p is actually less than p to the alpha minus 1? Well, if p minus p to the alpha minus 1 is less than 0, let's say, let's say p to the alpha plus 1. All right, let's uh, put it a little different. If p minus p to the alpha plus 1 is less than 0, what does that tell us? Mm. No, this is now really confused. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how to say this well. We're trying to check if g to the p... Actually, maybe before even checking... Okay. Why do we care about the element g to the p? Fine. Suppose... Let's say... If just We haven't yet proved this, but... What if g to the p is an element of g? Why does that guarantee us? An, how will that help us to find an element of G that has order P? Right. Well, what what does it what does the order mean again? If we say the order of an element X is n, what does that mean? Are we saying that n is the smallest power such that when X is raised to it, smallest positive power such that X to the n gives us the identity? Okay. Let's now look at g to the p. Right. Let's think about what's the order of g to the p. What, what's the order of g to the p going to be equal to? Right. What does that mean? That means... Does it mean that... Are, are we asking, well, what's the smallest power to which we can raise g to the p in order to get the identity? Another way of asking that question is, well... How many times do we need to multiply g to the p by itself? What is the smallest number of times we need to multiply g to the p by itself in order to get the identity? Right. So for instance, is g to the p times g to the p going to give us the identity? Right. Well, let's see. What, what's question? What, what's, what's g to the p times g to the p? Okay. Is that g to the 2 alpha g, g to the 2p okay is g to the 2p equals to the identity right is a question well right how would we uh, determine this uh, how would we determine the smallest power the, the smallest number of times that we'll have to multiply g to the p by itself right how many times how many times how many? How many times would we have to multiply g to the p by itself in order to get the identity? What's the smallest number of times we need to do this? Right. So, suppose we multiply g to the p by itself, let's say, m times, okay? Suppose that g, we multiply g to the p times g to the p times g to the p and we made that equal to uh, m multiplication, m times, right? What would that give us? Right. Would that be g to the p plus g to the p plus 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 g to the p, m times, which would that then give us g to the mp? Okay. So... First of all, before we even figure out what is the smallest value that m can be, what is the smallest number of times you can do the multiplication, could we at least figure out what would have to be true about m so that g to the mp actually gives us the identity? Right. So what else did we learn about Lagrange's theorem? Did we learn that, right, we saw at some point that if, if g is any finite group, and if order of g is p to the alpha, can we conclude that g is finite? We learned that if g is any group, then if we picked, okay, so 
let's see. One of the consequences of Lagrange we learned before is that look, if 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 if, if G is any group that's finite, if G is any group that's finite, and we pick some element x in G, right, then the order of x must divide the order of G. Right? Do you remember this? Okay. So So we're saying that if we got g to the p, we're wondering, well, how many times do we need to multiply g to the p by itself in order to get the identity, right? What's, what's the smallest number that will do this? We're wondering, well, what's the order of g to the p, right? That's what we're wondering about. Well, what we do know is that g to the p, if we multiply g to the p twice, then... Can we say that, for instance, is g to the p times g to the p equals to g to the 2p? What about g to the p times g to the p times g to the p? Is that equal to g to the g to the 3p? Right. Well, in general, How are we going to place say this correctly? Well, suppose that we found that the order of g to the p were equal to some m. Okay, what would have to be true about m given given what we know here that in a finite group the order of every element must divide the order of the group? Would we at least be able to conclude? Can we say that the order of g p Okay, let's not use m. Why are we using m? The, can we at least conclude that the order of gp must divide the order of g? Right, can we conclude that? Okay, we're running out of space and time. Okay, there you go. All right. So let's 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 go to the top. All right. So. All right. So we just said that Lagrange's theorem. Part of what it tells us is that the order of every element must divide the order of the group. So. Can we conclude that the order of the element g to the p must also divide the order of the group g? Okay. Well, what's the order of the group g? Is it is the order of the group g equals to p to the alpha? Okay. So, are we saying then that the order of g to the p must divide p to the alpha? All right. Well, Suppose that order of g to the p equals to some number. It's actually equals to n. Okay. Well, are we saying that n must divide p to the alpha? Okay. All right. So if n is the order of p, if if n is the order of n is the order of g. And we're saying that n divides p to the alpha. Let's think about well, what possible values could n have, right? Could, I mean, what possible values can divide a prime? Right. So, for instance, if you had p cubed, what are the possible devices of p cubed? All right. All right. So uh, we just run out of time. These are a lot of mysteries to deal with, but. The whole point of it is we're trying to we're trying to investigate this idea. Well, suppose G is a group. Suppose order of G equals to p to the alpha. Does this imply that there exists a subgroup of H? A subgroup of G such that order of H equals to p equals to p, right? So the way we are proving it is we're saying, look, we're saying, okay, to show that there exists a subgroup of order p, all we need to show is that actually that the order, if the order of g equals to p to the alpha, then that implies that there exists some element little g in g, such that order of little g equals to p. If we can show that there's an element of order p, we're saying that we would be able to show that there is a subgroup of order p. Okay. How are we proving that? How are we trying? How are we gonna prove this fact that if a group has 
order p to the alpha then it must have an element of order p right that, that's that, that's that's what's leading to the confusion here and what we're saying is all right is the following statement true either either g has some element of order p to the alpha or it doesn't all right or it doesn't no element exists so so far we've been talking the case well what if g the order of the uh, g actually has an element the set g has an element of order p to the alpha suppose that's true okay if the set if the group g has an element of order p to the alpha right what we've been tackling now is well then maybe we can write g in this form we could write the set g as g to the 0 g to the 1 all the way up till g to the p to the alpha minus 1 and we're saying g is actually cyclic generated by the element g and we're saying that now all we need to do at least for this case where there's an element of order p to the alpha all we need to do is to find an element of g that has order p because if we can find an element of order p again at least we are guaranteed that if there's an element of order p to the alpha then there's an element of order p which means that there must be an element of there must be a subgroup of order h okay in the case when there's an element of order p to the alpha so we'll have solved part of our problem now, how are we going about finding an element of order p in here? So, curiosity led us to think about the element g to the p, g to the p element of g. And we're asking the question, well, what's the order of g to the p? Right. What's the order of g to the p? g to the p equals, order of g to the p equals to what? Right. So, please see if you can figure out what the order of g to the p is. And if you successfully find what the order of g to the p is, and maybe successfully find in the case where there's an element of order p to the alpha, if you're able to find an element of order p, okay, then maybe try and tackle the next case. What if there's no element of order p to the alpha? Can we also still conclude that there must be an element of order p? And given all of that information, can you complete the proof that, or is, is it even true, can you complete the proof that if order of g equals to p to the alpha, then there exists some subgroup h of g, such that the order of h equals to p to the alpha could you could you complete the proof otherwise thank you very much for listening to this uh for watching this uh this video and have a relentless week bye